angle if he were to pull back his hair a bit. I can probably guesstimate it to be maybe an Ord 3? Maybe an Ord 4? But him getting a win in a midsection like this is all the more welcomed. And that's probably the case because those hair follicles were still metabolically active, although they were produced. I guess you can say he, he might be a hyper responder just to the sheer extent and magnitude he recovered. Hey guys, before we continue this video, I would like to mention that we now have liposomal monoxidal sulfate on my website, phologens.com, F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z.com. And if the order queue is available and open, you can order it there. We're running it as a cosmetic. There are other sort of botanicals inside of this particular topical that are pretty helpful when it comes to conditioning the hair. So that's at phologens.com, F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z.com. That's F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z.com. Go check it out and maybe even try it out. See you there. Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another hair review video and we're back on Trustless and we're going to be looking at this particular post by the user Sam24995. Now the title of the post is quote, from day one to day 365, being on one milligram finasteride and 5% topical minoxidil has changed my life, unquote. So let's have a look at this post. So this guy writes in the description of his post, quote, after I was looking to find some way to try to save my hair from thinning slash balding, I stumped upon this subreddit and decided to start with my treatments when I did enough research. I'm super, th I'm super thankful for this place and I hope I can answer any questions you all may have, unquote. Now let's have a look at his baseline picture. Already, you can see that he has a tremendous amount of thinning in the midsection and crowned. And also his hairline is quite recessed. It looks like from this angle, if he were to pull back his hair a bit, I can probably guesstimate it to be maybe an Ord 3, maybe an Ord 4, but it's kind of hard to tell what's going on with his hairline from this baseline picture. But it's not really hard to tell that he has a lot of miniaturization in the midsection and crown area of his scalp. So let's go on to the next picture in the camera roll, picture number two. So picture number two gives us a sort of more clearer, non-blurry kind of view of his scalp. And again, yeah, you can see he has a lot of thinning in the midsection and crown. And, you know, if he were to not do any treatment, he could easily get a North 6 kind of appearance in maybe three years' time tops. Going on to the next picture in the camera roll, and wow! <laughs> you can see the recovery that's been made. So I'm assuming these two pictures in the beginning were sort of baseline photos. So maybe a, a, a year zero or day one of treatment, as he termed it. And then over here, this is possibly towards the year mark. Maybe there's probably a bit more improvement to be shown in the next picture. But you can see that there has been a tremendous recovery in the midsection. Pretty much his midsection has recovered, and only the crown area is the problem area right now. But even then, you, you know, even if this crown area isn't to come back, looking at where he started out, you know, the midsection, him getting a win in a midsection like this is all the more welcomed. And that's probably the case because those hair follicles were still metabolically active, although they were producing vellus hairs. And it's insane to see the progress that can be made in just a year's time. So guys, even if you don't get this sort of progress in a year's time, everyone's different. Some people, it takes them two years to see any sort of progress. Other people, literally six months. So you have to be consistent with treatment and you have to keep pursuing it. Don't fall off, stay on treatment. And if you have to upgrade from finasteride to something like dutasteride, of course, go talk to your doctor if you have any sort of questions. Now. Let's move on to the fourth picture in the camera roll and let's see where he's at. So this is 365 days later. Now I understand the lighting condition is a bit different over here. The light is kind of more direct towards his scalp where in the last picture, not really, but guys, you can see the density. It's 
you know, pretty interesting, right? Maybe he goes to a gym. I don't know. This picture over here looks like a gym picture. So this is probably what he wears to the gym. That This looks like stalls. Um, so it could just be a different environment where he is now in this photo. doesn't mean it's the same day. But clearly, I think it's arguable that he has made a decent recovery in the midsection. Obviously, you can't see any anything, you know, the coverage alone is enough to block any sort of scalp. But also, like I always say, right, there's a lot of people that like to argue, well, he just grew out his hair. Look, he had pretty long hair in this picture over here, especially in the baseline picture. You are not going to get this kind of coverage, right? This kind of coverage over here, you're not going to get that with this kind of hair over here. Because the hairs are so weak, they're wispy, they're miniaturizing, they're thin overall. But over here, there's more weight to the hair. It's, you know, there's more hair density on his scalp. And the intermediate hairs are much more in number than the vellus hairs. And there are some intermediate hairs that turned into terminal antigen hairs. Not only that, but his crown area has pretty much recovered. So... Good on this guy. He's not some kind of hyper responder in my book. I think this is some kind of, you know, I mean, and I guess you can say he, he might be a hyper responder just to the sheer extent and magnitude he recovered. But this is like maybe semi typical results you can expect with five alpha ductase inhibitors so long as you respond earlier. Uh, that is, if you start treatment early, right? And it's never too late to start. So this is where he started out, right? His baseline, all the way to where he is now. So that's a tremendous improvement. And once again, he's using one milligram finasteride and 5% topical minoxidil. But guys, as I've said in my other videos, I started a company called Folligens, F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z dot com. And we're actually selling liposomal monoxidal sulfate at a 10% concentration, as you can see over here, but also in a 5% concentration, as you can see over here. At the time of recording this video, it is October 5th, 2025, and we are currently in stock. But if you see this video in the future and you're interested to try this out at either a one month or a three month supply, then please, if it's not in stock, just simply put your name on the wait list and you'll be notified whenever we are in stock. But this is a pretty interesting sort of topical hair serum that we have. There's no propylene glycol. There are no other drying alcohols. So this might be something you might consider to try to get fuller looking hair. And also, like I said, it's not drying. It has a sort of lightweight finish to it, a milky kind of texture. Just be sure to shake it each time you use it. There's no need to microneedle using this hair serum. There is no need, there shouldn't be any need to use tretinoin or other retinoids when using this hair serum. So just avoid using those when using this with uh, sulfogens. And we, like I said, we are currently in stock at the time recording this video. So go try it out. Maybe you could get fuller looking hair like our guy did today in this video, our subject over here. But overall, this is what you're going to get if you're consistent. And guys, let's just be real here. Because I've been seeing a lot of discourse in the community. A lot of people are still trying to avoid the use of finasteride or dutasteride. You can't. You can't. If you have androgenetic alopecia, those two medications are fundamental to treating your male pattern or even female pattern hair loss. If you're not treating the androgen line of things, then you're not going to get any kind of progress. But also there are people who are like, well, why not use RU5841? Why not use KXA26 pyrolutamide? Why not use CBO3 brizula? And to that I say, you can, you can try to use those things, but they don't have long-term efficacy. We don't know the long-term data. Out of all those topical antiandrogens, whether it's CB301, Brizula, class Cauterone, or RU58841, also known as PSK3841, 
a very, very old classical experimental topical antiandrogen, or if it's KXA26 pyrolutamide from Koshine from Kintour, right? Out of all of them, KXA26 seems to be the most promising one, but still, it does not beat finasteride or dutasteride. You have to make your choice. And I, that, that choice really is using finasteride or dutasteride. It has to be the choice. If not, then you're just fighting a losing battle, to be honest with you, because you have to solve the baseline issue, which is the sensitivity to DHT in the hair follicle. In any case, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. This guy made a tremendous recovery from this being his baseline to a year later being at this. And I ask you this question, if you're still hesitant on trying medication, where would you be in a year's time if you simply tried minoxidil and finasteride? Keep that in mind. Anyway, that's it for this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. And go check out Sulfogen's TM at folligens.com. That's F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z.com. And possibly consider using liposomal monoxidal sulfate at the 5% or 10% concentration. See ya.